Hi everybody. This is actually an opening to the video that I was going to put up this morning. What I am talking about, I'm going to tell you something that's, I, I don't even know how to start. Honest to God, and I don't use that loosely, I made the video this morning knowing that I've got some family members and friends that have got issues with food allergy. As soon as I finish the video on my garden, I get a phone call from somebody very, very close to me. They ended up going to the doctor. I'm not going to say who they are, and I'm not going to say what medical facility it is, but this is what they were told. She was told that 80% of the people now in the U.S., at least in this area, let's just say right now, let's just say 80% have IBS and they are aware of it. How much they talk to people about it, I don't know, but they told, they explained this to her with labs at the lab. Being that this medical, huge medical group knows about it, they have brought in every day to their medical facilities all over fruits that are coming from organic farms that they know that are not washed and picked but are totally organic. Their staff is instructed to eat it, she was explained today. They are instructed to eat it without washing it because they have to get everything off the fruit, including insects, they even told them. The reason it was explained to them I, 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 it's blowing my mind because I did this video this morning that you're going to see after this, and this is exactly what this person found out. The reason 80% of the people they were explained have IBS is because of the food now, because of their irradiation. Food is irradiated. You've, you are losing much of the vitamins, and you are losing all the enzymes that you would need for your gut and a the piece of food needs, the fruit, let's say apple needs, to break down. There is no more enzymes in any of the foods now, almost all of them. We don't know which do have the enzymes still and which do not. But for food safety, they're radiating, they were explained at this medical, huge medical facility, that they are radiating everything almost. Because this way, there'll be a 99.9% percent chance of no E. coli, and then also pesticides. Um, they, if they use pesticides, but there's still insects on it, all the insects will be gone, and the shelf life. The biggest thing is the shelf life, because the enzymes are gone, that apple can sit on the shelf for even a month without breaking down. A little scratch on it, you might get mold from the air, but they were instructed to eat the fruit that is brought in not to wash it and eat it as is. This is why I did this video. I will explain in my garden how, why. What we do is I pick fresh mint every day from our garden. I put it in the bullet. You don't need to hear the noise. I've already got that on another video. I dump that in the teapot and I put warm water, warm to hot water through it. And then I top it with cold water and we drink this all day. No joke, I explained how I can drink milk now and I can eat other foods that used to bother me. And the reason is, my this close person was told today, is that people are lacking enzymes in their body and probiotics. Please watch the video, please pass it, please tell people. I'm not trying to scare anybody. They told them the same thing. You may not, this medical facility explained to their employees and their staff, you cannot change what is going on in the stores, they explained to them. But what you can do is eat a single apple, and that will bring enzymes and probiotics into their system, which will help them with the other foods they're eating that is lacking it. Please watch the video. I'm just flabbergasted as soon as I finished it, and I was almost getting ready to launch it, did I get this call and said, to, from this person saying they've got IBS and they know why and then they were explained through the medical facility what is going on. So this is why it's mind-blowing that so many people I know are having problems 
and it was exactly what I had told this person and she was sitting there saying, oh my gosh, I was told this over and over, I can't believe it. And they, they said, well, that person's on the right track. What they told you was true because they have been lectured. I also know another person that was lectured through the same thing because they work for a pharmaceutical company and they were explained to go straight out into a garden, pick leaves and eat it, don't wash it, don't clean it, because you need all that for your gut. This was another person. So it's getting out there. Please watch the video. Please ask questions. And I, I just can't believe I would go out in my garden and that I would be doing a video on this to, to finish the video and then get a phone call on the whole video I did on this subject. Again, it's not to scare anybody, it's actually to get people to understand what is going on and to understand what you could do to maybe improve your body. You can't fight anybody on anything. I'm not asking you to do that. I want you to grow something. This one little tea drink that I make, and as you notice, I put water in here and I added a very small amount because this is potent. This is leaves from my garden. This particular one has got spearmint, lemon verbena, stevia, and a little bit of moringa because we have a moringa tree which is full of vitamins, nutrients, probiotics, and everything. So please watch the video. I'm sorry it's too long. It wasn't planned that way. And please, we need to make ourselves healthy and we could do it without fighting the government, without fighting anybody, just adding in a little something into our own diets to keep us going with what we have to eat and what we have to deal with. Enjoy the video. Wow, this is good. This morning I came out to have coffee in my garden. And I've had a lot of thoughts and I've been debating on how to do this video. So let's see if I can keep this one short. Because I'm trying to make a point. But again, please understand I will never tell anybody what to do how to do it, what is wrong and what is right, because what is right for me may not be right for somebody else, and what is right for you may not work for me. On a lot of different things. That includes if you have an issue and you needed to spray your garden. Don't ever feel guilty if you had to go get some spray. Try to keep it organic. People shouldn't feel guilty about things. People should have to do for themselves what they have to do, and that's that. But that's not what I want to talk about today. What I want to talk about today is something I started to look up for certain family members and friends, and I'm not going to say who, it doesn't matter, who started having food allergies that didn't make any sense to me. I knew about some of the procedures going on with food nowadays, but I didn't know as much as I started to find out. And the more I got into it, the more I dug up, the more I found out, and it was disturbing to me. And you know what? I'll walk through the garden as I talk about it. I will say I would love to see people, everyone, and I mean it, garden. I don't even care how old you are, whether you're a kid or in your 90s. I would love to see everybody garden something. And when I say garden, I mean even mean something like this, just growing some mint. Could you imagine on a cold winter night to be able to go pick some mint leaves and make yourself a beautiful tea? Now, you know how I make my teas. I actually put this in a bullet or a blender and I blend it up, put it in a strainer and pour hot water through it. So I'm getting so much of the nutrients and enzymes and everything out of this beautiful plant. That is so easy. Anybody can do that. You know, even ginger. You could probably grow ginger in your house in the winter. Keep it by a window. We had ours growing all winter last year in the house. Gary brought some in and I left some out. I have a reason for this. I do have a personal reason why I would like people to grow things. Here's basil. Lemon verbena. There's something else you can put in the garden. Just grow it as a bush. A beautiful bush and make a tea out of it. That's what we do. Going back to the food allergies. These people I know never had an allergy in their life. There's not even people in the few family members I know. There's not even that many family members that have allergies. 
But these allergies have been more recent. I'm going to say within the past, let's say within the past 10 years. I'm not sure how many people are aware of this, but most of the food now in the United States, and I have looked this up, this includes Australia and other countries as well, are irradiating food. Fresh produce is being irradiated. I'm going to try to say something and hopefully you'll understand what I say. I'm going to use the term, I understand why they do this. That doesn't mean I agree with it, but I understand why they're doing this. When you take apples, oranges, bananas, uh, garlic, potatoes, ginger, greens, when you take food like that and you irradiate it, what it's doing, and there's three levels, by the way, that they do this on, three levels. What it does is it kills all the pests that are on there, so I understand that, but it also kills all the bacteria on there. That's good and bad bacteria. So it prolongs the shelf life. So when you used to go in and buy greens in the store, and if they didn't sell it in, in a matter of a few days, the greens were either discounted or thrown out in their dumpsters, the big grocery stores. Now, the same greens that only lasted a few days can last for two weeks. Somebody said to me, well, wait a minute. I buy fruits and vegetables and they do eventually rot. Of course they rot. It's still a living matter at some point. It's still something that's going to pick up mold from the air and it still will eventually break down. But what's gone out of your fruit or vegetable is the actual enzyme that promotes the food to get ripe. By nature, it ripens, it rots, and the seeds grow if it has seeds. That's gone. The enzyme that breaks down the food, the fruit, is gone. This is what has it stay on the shelf for so long. Now, like I said, I understand why they do it. You could take something that would cost next to nothing and end up making it go up to an outrageous amount by simply having so much waste. There's very little waste now compared to what used to be because of the way they now irradiate food. Apples, it doesn't have anything on it but a number. And I'll show you the apples. There's a number on there. That number shows that the apple has been irradiated. People have asked me, how did you get ginger at the store to grow? It's a hit and miss. I bought garlic two years ago. Now, again, every year they're irradiating more and more foods are added to the list that they're doing as a regular basis now. The garlic that I bought in the grocery store that came from the USA, none of it grew. Not one piece of garlic that I tried from different stores grew. Not one. I planted them and they all rotted. What was interesting is the garlic I bought from China all grew into beautiful garlic. Why? I don't know. Did they forget to irradiate it? Did it go through a low level? Was it sitting in the center of the container and some of the garlic in the center didn't get the full radiation? I don't know. I can't answer that. Because technically, things that are being brought in are supposed to be irradiated to get rid of pests. I don't know. But what I do know now is much of our food is being irradiated. Here is what's bothering me. Most people don't know. There is no radiation. There is nothing in that food that is being irradiated to hurt you. As far as I know, they swear that it can't hurt you. I'm going to believe them on that point. It will not hurt you. But here is the issue that I think about. We have 
bacteria in our body. I'm going to try to keep this as so everybody can understand that we have bacteria in our body that it belongs there, that is supposed to be there, and that bacteria breaks down food. So when we eat something, we eat a tomato, we have the proper bacteria in our body to break down the food to pull all the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients out of that tomato or greens or whatever we're going to eat. We also get from the fruit itself the proper enzymes so it works together with our body to break the food down in the proper way. What we're not getting right now on food that's irradiated is the enzymes from the food. And unfortunately, a lot of the vitamins have been destroyed as well. It's not a wax fruit because not every single thing has been killed out of it. Not everything. But a lot of it has been. That's why if you look around, so much of our food is now fortified with vitamins. They call it also electronic pasteurization. Interesting, a new term I just saw come up recently on our food. Because everybody knows milk is pasteurized here. So now they're just saying some of our other foods are pasteurized. And they do this to a lot of food. There's an entire list. It's practically everything, including meats and fish. Do you know the food you're buying if it's radiated? You're supposed to, but there's different ways. If they come in bulk at the grocery store and there's bins of, let's say, apples and oranges, they're technically supposed to post it somewhere because it may have been on the box if they're not individually marked. The apples I got that I'm showing were individually marked to let me know that those are radiated. I didn't even know when I bought them they were. This is all new. I have gone around to three different grocery stores and I know that almost all spinach and greens are now irradiated. All it said on the labels I found was if you wanted more information on the treatment of their food pro being processed and packaged, call them. That's what it said. Call them. That was their answer. And that's fine. Okay, now I've made a point and I'm not trying to scare anybody. No, no, no. We're not going to be able to change this. We can't go pick it and march down the street or get angry. It isn't going to change. This is all done for the grocery stores to save money because of so much waste. I understand that. And this is why I'm finding it more important than ever to grow something. And again, as little as mint, as little as popolo, basil, parsley. Think about it. If you're buying food that has no enzymes in it and orange is losing m much of their vitamins in it, wouldn't it be good to be able to go in your own garden, even if it's just simply a flower pot with some f herbs growing in it, and pick something and eat that every day out of it? At least you know for a fact that you're getting your own enzymes. You're getting it out of your food. I find that fascinating. You need to start putting enzymes back into your body. Now, the people I know that are having major allergy problems with food lately, greens especially, which is interesting, they don't have gardens, neither one. So they are eating nothing but what they're buying at the grocery store. And unfortunately, most of it is packaged. Also, Certain foods, such as garlic, if you're buying it cleaned and packaged, possibly went through the irradiation twice because they'll irradiate it many times when they bring it off the farms in big containers and then they will irradiate the plastic bags when they're packaged. And again, this is to prevent E. coli and different things and growth and bacteria growth that breaks down the food. I understand it. That's why those plastic bags at the grocery store lasts so long now. You wonder about it. You used to go to the grocery store when I was a kid and if you didn't buy the produce that day, they were throwing out a lot of it. Now they can bring in more and have less waste. I'm just trying to say, food for thought, try to get something growing. Try to eat something. Even if it's one leaf out of your garden a day, you're eating those enzymes. I'm not trying to stop anybody from going to the grocery store and buying something. That's not what I'm doing here. We're not going to be able to do anything. The human body is amazing. It adapts to all the things we put it through. 
Think about it, even the air we breathe isn't that great. We adapt. But what you want to do is to be able to go into your garden and pick something. Eat something right out of the garden. Grab, grab some leaves. Grab some broccoli. Pinch that off. Eat it. There's more broccoli. Grow something, whether it's broccoli leaves or kale leaves, and pinch that off and add that to whatever you bought at the grocery store. Because I know for a fact that most people are not going to grow a big garden and grow their own food. They're just not going to. They don't have the room, the time, or whatever, or the space. That's why space to me is not that important. I know you've probably seen the container garden I did there. That's a three tier. It's so full you can't even see the containers anymore. You can grow so much food in a small area. Cheap. You can get those containers cheap. So that's all I wanted to talk about. It bothers me that I didn't know that they were irradiating pretty much everything now. They're not telling us but that's okay, I know now. And you know, I don't know what was going on, but over a year ago, I couldn't drink milk. Suddenly, out of the blue, I couldn't drink milk. I don't know why, I would drink milk, I would get violently sick. So I got off of milk and started drinking, you know, cashew, almond milk, soy milk, and not real big on soy, but a little bit of soy milk. And then I started making my mint tea. Here's the spearmint that's growing all over the ground. I started making mint tea every day. Couldn't even eat ice cream a little bit if I wanted. My homemade ice cream, yeah, but not from the grocery store. And then I bought some ice cream one day. It was hot and ate it and didn't bother me. And you know, I'm not saying milk is good. I'm just saying I can drink milk. I can drink all the milk I want now. Obviously, there was an enzyme I was missing and the mint is giving it to me. So as long as I drink mint tea, and we drink that every day, think of all the nutrients I'm getting out of this. It's grow this is growing on the ground, all on the ground. It is pulling up all kinds of minerals and vitamins and nutrients. And then next to it, growing next to the water fountain here, that's parsley. That's flat leaf Italian parsley. See, that's what I'm trying to emphasize is we don't have to go crazy over all these things and panic. What we have to do is be aware of it and add in a little something that we know is not sprayed with pesticides, is not irradiated where there's no vitamins in it that we need, or the enzymes. We could go buy fake enzymes at the store. I mean, there's some people doing that right now and they're happy with that. And if you want to buy enzymes, go buy enzymes. But we get our enzymes by just walking through the garden, picking a leaf and eating it, or adding it to our own food. And anybody can do that. The simplest things to grow are greens. And on top of that, those are the most expensive to buy in the store. We're not gonna go all plant apple trees. I mean, that's a whole new thing too on apples. Some of the trees are injected with pesticides or chemicals so they won't get pests. You know, that's a whole new story. That's a different story. But the point is, if we all can grow something in a cute little flower pot on our window, some herbs, and then pinch that and eat that, we're going to get added enzymes that we're not going to get from our food. How beautiful this is. Anybody can grow a small amount of kale. Look how beautiful these leaves are. Think of the nutrients and enzymes in there. This is what I'm pushing. I'm not pushing people to go spend a lot of money. I'm not pushing people to do any more than grow a little something. And do it as cheaply as you can if you want. If you want to go buy some potting soil, buy some potting soil. You want to do your own composting with kitchen scraps? Do that too. Whatever it takes to have somebody grow something to get those enzymes that they need, including the added vitamins and nutrients you'll get out of it, Whatever it takes to get you to grow something. I don't expect people to have a big garden. So think about that. And if anybody does have food allergies that you didn't have before, start looking into the food that you're eating and start Googling it and checking it out. Somebody asked me, how did I grow ginger from ginger I bought at the store? I actually bought that at the store uh, over a year ago, I guess. And I, it's a hit and miss. So why some of it grew, I don't know, but I do know that we did buy some ginger for fun recently and they rotted, they wouldn't grow. 
So those were highly, heavily radiated. They wouldn't grow. So I'm not saying not to buy them from the grocery store. You know, I mean, if you're buying a piece of ginger, I wouldn't worry. If it grows, it grows. Now, the other problem is there is radiated food that will grow. There's been food that's been zapped for a long time. Sunflower seeds been zapped. They wanted to protect their brand. So they were zapping that. I didn't even know about it. I was sprouting sunflower and suddenly I couldn't sprout it anymore and found out they were being zapped. Hemp seed you buy for a certain animal feed, of course, is radiated. Did you know it will sprout? But that's as far as it will go. It will just sprout. So if you're eating sprouted seed, you can get it to sprout, but it won't grow because it's been radiated. So a lot of your products, if it's not heavily radiated, will grow, but it won't grow into a full mature plant. And that could be what some people said, they planted ginger and it died, or they bought some garlic from the store and it died back because it was irradiated. It could never get to the proper stage of growing. So on certain foods now, onions are radiated big time. Potatoes, so they don't you know, ripen in the store and start growing. It may have to go actually to a you know big seed company that sells that and get it because from them it better not be radiated and it shouldn't and it most likely is not. So that's all I wanted to talk about today, food for thought. Why? I am really trying and that's what I am doing here on our channel. I'm trying to get people to grow something and I want nobody to ever feel bad or guilty if they ever had to do something. I, I know people are afraid, oh my gosh, I got some insects, I couldn't get rid of them. What do I do? You know, I don't want to tell anybody. I went to the store and I bought some vegetable garden spray. You know, if you have to do that, you have to do that. Don't you ever feel guilty on what you have to do in your yard. You know, you have to do what is best for you. You may get an infestation of something and you may have to go out and do something. Since we've brought in the birds, we don't even have to think about it. But, you know, not everybody's going to be able to bring in the birds. They're going to have a little garden or too big of a garden. You do what you need to do. Because the main thing is I want people to start to grow. And I think once you start, you learn more. People have said to me, oh, my gosh, you've got a green thumb. How wonderful. I wish I had your green thumb. Oh, come on. I couldn't keep a house plant alive years ago. I couldn't grow anything. But I'll tell you why. I think I didn't have the true love and interest in it. And I think that's with a lot of us. If we try something, it doesn't work out, we're done, we go on to something else. Now I do have the love and interest in it. And that's why I get upset if something comes through and eats something out of my garden, like a big, beautiful prize zucchini I was going to pull in. But, you know, I go pick myself up and go on, cover it with tool and go on with my day. You know, I'm, I am joking, but I am not joking. I'm trying to make a point. We all have to do what we have to do. Whatever it takes to get us to grow. Look, I just bought some strawberry plants. My daughter got me a tower and I'm gonna plant some strawberry plants in the tower. You know, whatever it takes for us to grow, let me let you know. Strawberries are heavily irradiated. That's another thing. Google it. Don't take my word for it. Look up irradiated food. I just want people to understand that there is a reason why we all should be growing something. And like I said, as simple as tea. Now, let's back up here. I'm gonna show you my ginger field. Here is my field of ginger, turmeric, and stevia. Now, I couldn't grow that. The first year I went and bought stevia, I killed it. I planted it in the ground, it grew, it died. It died, it did not come back, it died. I found out that it loves this shaded wall. So it gets the sunlight coming through the pine trees and then at, as the afternoon goes, it grows in shade. It grows beautiful. I am going to continue to grow my ginger, turmeric, and stevia here. I am not going to move it. In fact, I've got a little bit of room there to plant some more. And that's what I plan on doing. Last year, I left it here on the table and they died back a little. They still stayed a little bit green, but they will die back in the winter. So will your stevia. Don't worry about that. They'll come back up. When I'm trying to say in your own yard, in your own situation, you'll get to know your plants. If, it, if you didn't succeed the first time, you'll try something else. I tried something else and I was planning on doing something else with this table, but this works out so well, uh-uh. This will now be the table for that and as well as maybe putting some plants in containers and starting them here and keeping an eye out on them. 
the big leaf here. This is turmeric. And yes, I did get the turmeric from the grocery store. I think a piece came out of Gary's garden. I lucked out. But I also bought the turmeric at an Asian store. So maybe they didn't radiate theirs. Maybe they had a farmer that brought it in. I don't know. The same thing with the ginger, you know. And I have bought some ginger at the dollar stores. And they, they grew. But what I am going to do now, since I am totally aware that most ginger right now is being irradiated, I am going to start planting my own because obviously my own is now successful. I don't need to buy any more. There's no reason. I, I think the urge is there when I see it started to grow and I want to bring it home and save it like I'm finding a puppy on the side of the road. I'm going to start planting and keeping pieces back. I will harvest it to a point. I will save some to regrow and I will eat some. We do need to grow our own food. We need to grow something. Ginger's really easy. If you're in an area that's cold and you don't get snow, you might be able to just plant pots up against your house because the house, if it's stucco, will stay, even wood, will stay some, you know, warmer. You have microclimates in your yard. So you have to think of the microclimates in your yard too. If you're doing it on a deck, the same thing. Push it up against the wall. And if not, it gets really cold, bring it in. I had ginger growing here. Gary brought it in, some of it, because I have multiple pots. And the pots that he brought in stayed green all through the winter in the house. So ginger was fine in the house. Grow and try different things. But I just wanted to talk, I think I'm trying to get this off my chest because when I did the research and found out that 90% of all your bagged greens are now irradiated. And my mom told me she's been buying certain greens in bags and she can't cook it. She said she cooks it and cooks it and cooks it. It's like rubber. What's going on? Well, I found out it's irradiated, so it's basically rubber. And so she's having a problem cooking certain vegetables. Another thing is somebody bought plums from the grocery store, put it on the counter. Sat for weeks, I was told. Never ripened. Eventually, it molded and rotted. Had to be irradiated because that's what it does. The ripening agent, the ripening enzyme that is in the fruit is killed. It's not going to grow that back. That's not coming back. But what will come is natural mold and fungi from the air. And that's normal. And that's what came back and that's what rotted our food. So we all have to do what we have to do. All I want you to do is start thinking about growing things. Instead of putting a flower pot out there with flowers, maybe put some flower pots out there with mint. Mint is wonderful. Get a mint that you like. Get a mint that tastes good to you. We've tried multiple mints. This is orange all over. Guess what? Carrie's not crazy about orange anymore, but it's here. It's growing, it's doing good. The bees love it, brings lots of bees to the garden, it grows really good in the ground, I'm leaving it. He prefers spearmint. Thank goodness he prefers spearmint because it's all over the ground there. It grows like a weed. But he prefers spearmint with a little lemon verbena and a little stevia and he loves it. And then chocolate mint and peppermint. Those are two different mints. They're fantastic and I do not put lemon verbena in that. I just put some stevia or no stevia at all. You can add that to coffee. You can add that to milk. If you make peppermint or chocolate mint tea, you know, or make a brew out of that, oh my gosh, you can make, I made Gary a banana shake last night and he went wild over it. Just bananas, little milk, and mint leaves. He couldn't believe how good it was. Just those three ingredients thrown in a blender. Oh, I did throw some ice in there, but that was it. It was so good, he couldn't believe it. No sugar, just true mint leaves. I did not use the stems to make a shake. When I'm making tea or a brew, I sometimes don't bother taking the stems off. I take a few of the stems off, but you know, a few little stems, I leave them, I don't care, because it's going through a strainer. But when I made the shake last night, the malt, uh, not malt, it would be a shake, the drink with just some ban two bananas, some milk, some ice cubes, and some chocolate mint leaves, a handful, he went wild over it. He can't wait to get it today. I haven't made that. That's how easy it is to get your enzymes in you. 
sure the banana this particular one was bought at the store probably zapped probably didn't, didn't have any enzymes that were good for us but we picked it up out of the mint the mint from my garden that went in there gave us what we needed that's the point I'm trying to make and I have a feeling I did not keep this short <laughs> so why am I growing why do I have a passion to grow why do I have a passion to get everyone to grow something that's why I knew it was good for us I knew it made us feel better but now it's even more important we need the enzymes we all need enzymes to digest our food you're gonna say well your friend didn't have a problem but you did yeah well, everybody's different somebody may have you know more gut bacteria in them that can break anything down you know and somebody may not have as much so somebody may have an issue where somebody else doesn't everybody's different but everybody needs enzymes everybody and that's where we're going to get our enzymes we're going to get it from our own food grown in our garden or like this chocolate mint right here in a pot look at this look how easy i've got walking onion growing in here and chocolate mint all you would have to do is take a few leaves off every day have a couple pots it's just sitting here oh no little bugs look at that just sitting here and that's all any, anybody can grow and that's kind of in semi shade anybody can grow something so now I talked about what was on my mind and that's what I wanted to bring out today why I'm trying to get people to grow I'm going to apologize right now for going over on time because I really wanted to keep this down to seven minutes but when I start talking it seems like I can't I just hope I made a point so with that I'm going to start my day hopefully do something very productive everybody have a wonderful day and don't forget to eat something that you grow even if it's just a few leaves of mint every day celery you know, anything, you can grow it. Believe you me, kale will grow in a pot beautifully. One leaf, that will give you a lot of enzymes. Have a great day, and don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye, everybody.